In this lecture, we are going to look at sampling distributions. This is a very important topic, especially for statistical inference. Okay, so let's look at an example. Let random variable x be the outcome when you throw a die. Then the probability distribution of x is given in this table. So we have the possible outcomes for x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then the associated probability. So we know that the probability for each of these outcomes is equal to 1 over 6. And we can also represent this in a graphical way. So on the horizontal axis, we have the possible outcomes for x, and on the vertical axis, we have the probabilities. We can also calculate the population mean. Now you will remember um, that if x is a discrete random variable, then the population mean or the expected value of x is given by the sum of x times px, where px is the probabilities. So we get um, for x equal to 1, then we multiply it with its associated probability plus when x is equal to 2 and we multiply it with its associated probability of 1 over 6 and we continue in that way till we get to x equal to 6 times its probability of 1 over 6 and we get a population mean of 3.5. We can also calculate the population variance sigma square. So again because x is discrete the variance is given by the sum of the squared differences between x and the population mean times the associated probabilities. So when x is 1, I subtract the population mean of 3.5, I square the difference and I multiply it with the probability. Then when x is 2, I subtract the population mean of 3.5, I square the difference and I multiply it with the probability of 1 over 6, and I continue in that way up until where x is equal to 6. And I get a population variance of 2.92. Now before we continue, we have to understand the difference between a parameter and a statistic. A parameter is a statistical measure like a mean calculated for a given characteristic of the population. A statistic is a statistical measure, like a mean, calculated for a given characteristic of the sample. So for example, suppose we are interested in the mean age of patients admitted to a specific hospital. The mean age of all the patients ever admitted to this hospital is fixed and is called a parameter. Now suppose that the hospital records are incomplete and we decide to take a sample of 100 patients and calculate the mean age of these patients to represent or to estimate the population mean. This mean age is a sample mean and is therefore a statistic. If I now take a second sample of 100 patients, the mean age for the second sample will differ from the mean age of the first sample. So the statistic, in this case the mean age, will differ from sample to sample. And if it differs from sample to sample, it will follow a distribution. And this distribution is what we call a sampling distribution of the statistic. In a real-life situation, we would like to use the sample mean age of a single sample to represent or to estimate the mean age of the population of patients. It is therefore important to us to know how much variation there is in the sample mean from sample to sample, or stated differently, how close to the population mean can we expect the sample mean to lie. So if we go back to our example of the die, and we now want to know how closely the sample mean for a sample of size 2 estimates the population mean. So we first want to find the sampling distribution of the sample mean. So what I have here on the slide, I have all possible samples of size 2 if I have a six-sided die. And this is now sampling with replacement. So for the first sample, I can get a one. 
and a 1. So I have a sample of size 2 and both of my outcomes are 1s. And the sample mean will then be 1. Or I can get a sample where the first outcome is a 1 and the second outcome is a 2. So the sample mean is 1.5. Or I can get, for example, another sample where the first outcome is a 4, the second one is a 5, and therefore the sample mean is 4.5. So I have 36 possible samples of size 2. And from this, I can now set up the sampling distribution of the sample mean. And that is what we have here in this table. So my sample mean can take on the values 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, up until 6. And we have the associated probabilities. For example, to get a sample mean of 1, there is only one sample of size 2 where the sample mean is equal to 1. So that is why I have 1 over 36. If you look at the second one as sample mean of 1.5, there are two samples of size 2 where the sample mean will give me a 1.5. So that is why I have 2 over 36. And the same for all the other possible outcomes for the sample mean. And now we can also represent this sampling distribution of the sample mean in a graphical way. So here you can see what the sampling distribution of the sample mean looks like. You can see that this sampling distribution is symmetrical. It's almost bell-shaped. Now this differs from the, sum, uh, from the distribution of x. If we go back to the distribution of x, so here you can see what the distribution of x looks like. Now the interesting thing here is I can calculate the population mean of the sample mean. So to get the population mean of the sample mean, I will take the outcome for the sample mean 1 and I multiply it with its probability plus 1.5 times its probability plus 2 times its probability all the way up until 6 times its probability. And you can check that if you calculate the population mean of the sample mean, you get 3.5. The interesting thing here is that it's exactly the same as the population mean of x, which was also equal to 3.5. Just note the notation that I use. I use mu to indicate that it's a population mean, and then the subscript x bar to indicate that it's the population mean for my variable x bar. And here I use mu to indicate that it's the population mean subscript x of my variable x. If I go back to this slide, the variance for random variable x was equal to 2.92. If I now calculate the variance for my sample mean, I get 1.46. The interesting thing here is that if I take the variance for x, which was 2.92, and I divide it by 2, which is the sample size, I get 1.46. And we will say a little bit more about this in the next lecture.